hopefully the other guys will get on. They were leaving shul already also this morning, so they should be getting on shortly. Year of Learning by Dr. Paul Konigsberg, in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Ruven ben Leibish, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nisan Haranissen ben Fardosa. Paula and Bob Bromberg, in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda ben Yisrael. Malka Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Harav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bad Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, <coughs> Pesel bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom ben Yitzchak Kalevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Toby <coughs> ben Israel Dov, Friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef. Friends of Avi Gitler, Avram Meir Ben Shimon. Cheryl Sher, her children and grandchildren. In memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel Ben Harav Akiva. Marsha Federbush and family. In memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Ben Harav Shimon. Month of Learning, sponsored by Haran and Mel Haller. In memory of her mother, Malka Rachel Bas Yehuda Leib, Adina and Michael Kirshner. In memory of their parents, Florence and Nathan Kirshner, and friend Harriet Friedman. Tova and, Le and Leo Zimmer. In memory of her mother, Henya Bas Rav Beryl, and her father, Aram Ben Yosef Mordechai. Perry and Jill Meltzer. In memory of his mother, Malka Bas Baruch, and his sister, Godalea Bas David Halevi. Carol and Josh Sanborn, in memory of her father, Yoshua Shia ben Moshe Yehuda Kohen. Stanley Presser, in memory of her, his mother, Leah Bas Yehuda, his mother-in-law, Golda Bas Avram, and his wife, Rachel Mincha Bas Moshe. A week of learning, sponsored by Judy Iger, in memory of her mother, Bela Bas Anshel Yitzchak, Sherry and Moshe Gross, in memory of her mother, Miriam Bas Meyer. Today is the 27th, a day of learning by Wendy and Jay Goldberg. In memory of her father, Shraga Fivel Ben Ben Yaman. And Shemaz Heaven Aliyah, Krenka Rafia Velti Ashir Ashir Matliyah, and the Chobane Israel, a good Gabench Yar. Amen. All right. Our Gemara ended yesterday. We sort of went over a little bit to the top of Samach Zion, but I just want to quick review and get into the Gemara again, okay? Where there's a discussion and a difference of opinion, okay? As to the fact that the Korban Pesach, while it's tame, could be offered, okay? only on the condition that the entire community was tame. Okay. And the Gemara then went into this issue, comparing it to the Tamid, we said, but who then would be included or excluded in that assembly at that point? Okay. Uh, Gemara about... Uh, Four lines up on the bottom of Samach Vav Amud Beis, quickly said, Amale Resh Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish le Rabbi Yochanan, Ema Ish, okay, Nidche le Pesach Sheni, an individual is put off to Pesach Sheni, Sibur Lidlaho to Kanta, but he argued against Rabbi Yochanan that the community did not have a remedy, Lo be Pesach Rishon, Velo be Pesach Sheni. So Rabbi Shimon then continued, Lesh Lakish, Mehacha, and he de derived his idea from a different Pasuk. You send them out of the camp, called Sarua, the Zav, 
Bechol Tamei Lenefesh. Okay, all three, the leper, the one who is Zav, and the one who is Tamei. Yomar, right? Why? Because it says Tamei Meitim. We're talking about if they're corpse Tamei. But Al Yomar, Zavin and Mitzorin. But don't say it includes the Zav or the Mitzora. Va'ani Omer, he says, and I say, Reish Lakish, im t'me meitim mishtalchim, if the, those who are tame meis are sent out, zavin mitzorin lo kol shekein. Those who are a zav or a tzarua, okay, how much more so? And then we've got to the top now, on Samech Zayin Amud Aleph, okay? You have a situation where the Zav and the Mitzora are sent out. But those who are Tame corpse are not sent out. And what time is this? Pesach Habba It's the situation where Pesach is brought when the entire community is Tameh. And that's where we ended yesterday, with Abaye now coming and bringing a challenge. Ihachi, he says, if that's the case, okay, Lema Nami, let us also say, Yeomer Zav Tameh Metim, Va'al Yomar Mitzora, okay, that perhaps the Zav and the Tameh Metim should be included and exclude the Mitzora. Why? He says, Abai, va'ani omer, zav mishtalech. But I'll say that the zav, okay, is sent away. Mitzora, no. But the mitzora is not sent away. All right? Kol shekein. How much more so that he shouldn't? Right? Ela, yesh lecha sha'a, she mitzora in He says, Abai now giving his explanation that you have a situation, okay, where the mitzora is sent, ve'en zavin t'me'e But the one who is zav or tamei meis to court, right, is not sent. Ve'ezazeh, and when is this? Ha-pesach ha So he gives the same answer, okay? Again, when Pesach... Uh, is offered in in a status of tome. Okay, so we're beginning to see here a this a digression in a sense, where ultimately who gets sent out, or eventually the Gemara wants us to understand who is more, so to speak, tame, a more severe status of tuma. Is it the zav? Is it the tsarua? Is it the tame mace? Okay. And I, I'm going to continue in a moment, but pointing out quickly as a introduction that you could say, well, maybe the tame mace, okay, is uh, less tame than a zav because tame mace becomes tame from an exterior source whereas the Zav becomes Tomei from an internal source. So maybe the Zav is more Tomei. Or maybe I would say, well, Zav and Mitzora are equal because they're both coming from something physical, okay? Whereas the Tomei Mace comes from something, yes, it's physical, but it's not personal. So we're going to continue in this whole direction, okay? As the Gemara proceeds, says, and perhaps here too, you're going to and say, to include the Zav, okay? says the Gemara, but aren't we taught elsewhere in another Mishnah? Pesach okay, that a Korban Pesach offered in a status of Toma, lo yachlumi menu, it cannot be eaten by, 
zavim v'zavot, okay, male or females in the zav status, nidot, a woman in a nida status, v'yoldot, or a woman in having given birth, v'im achlu p'turin, and if they ate, they're exempt. Ella, amar abai, but rather abai put it this way, le'olam mikra kama. Ideally, he says, we're dearly talking about the original verse. Im kain, if that's the case, nichtov rachmana, then the Torah should have simply said, ish, ish, okay? Referring to individuals. Ki tame, when that person becomes tame, regardless of how it happens. The nefesh, okay? Becoming tame, the nefesh, okay? But why then do we need the word the nefesh? Lamali. That may seem to imply that they're not becoming tame on them on their own, in other words, by themselves, but they're becoming tame from an exterior source, from a corpse. Right. Okay. The chi tema. And if you want to say hi lenefesh, this reference in the Pasuk to Lenefesh, La Hachi Hudaata. It comes for this reason. Hatame mate who did the Pesach Sheni, that one who became Tame, okay, through a corpse, his Korban Pesach or her, okay, would be put off to Pesach Sheni. Aval Shat Meim, Lo, okay, but other, like the, tza, the Zav or the Mitzorah, Theirs would not be put off to Pesach Sheni. The Hatanya, right? But aren't we taught elsewhere in another brighter? Yechol, I might have thought, lo yihiyu osin Pesach Sheni, that it's not possible to carry out your korban on Pesach Sheni, alat me'e but rather those only who were tame from a corpse. The Shahaya Baderech Rechoka are those who were too far away. Zavi, Umetzorain, Ubale Nidot Minayan. But one who is the status of a Zav or Metzora, or even one who had relations with a Nida. Minayan, how do we know that theoretically they could put their Korban Pesach off? To Pesach Sheni, Talmud Loma, the text teaches us, ish ish, individual, lenefesh. Okay, therefore the fact that it says, for this body, this other person, the Ketav Rachmana Lamali, then why then again do we say it says lenefesh? Right, Ela Hachi Kamar. This is what it must mean. Ish nitchela pesach sheni. An individual is put off for their korban pesach if they're tame to pesach sheni. Ve'en sibur nitchela pesach sheni. But the community's offering, when it's in a status of tuma, is not put off to pesach sheni. Ela avdei but but rather they carry out the avoda, the sacrificial offering of the Pesach, of the Pesach, of the Korban Pesach, in, in the, the status the of being Tami. Now the Gemara continues. The ki avde tzibur betuma, and when the community does the avoda of Korban Pesach in this status of Tome, but to may mate, that may only apply when it's corpse tumor. Aval sha'ar tumot, lo avde. But with other kinds of tumor, they do not do the korban pesach. Now, in response to this, okay, 
since we've been discussing this issue, we get a further digression, okay? More about the issue of the level of tumor. Yeah, we always said Tommy Mesa's work is harder, no? Okay, well, we'll see. Amar right. Rav Chista. Rav Kori Rav Chista, he says as follows. Mitzora shenichnas lefnim memechitzato. If we have a mitzora that enters in beyond his boundary, pator. Now, what does it mean by that? Remember that in the, in the Midbar, there were three camps, okay? There were the camp closest to the Mishkan, primarily Kohani. Then a second camp around that, primarily Levi'im. And a third camp, primarily Yisrael. And when the base Hamikdash was built, those three camps were paralleled, I'm going to say, by the areas of, as follows. The first camp, closest to the base of Mikdash. The second camp, right, further out, right, beyond the Azara to the outside walls of the entire temple precinct. And the third camp, the entire walls surrounding Jerusalem. Okay. So if we're saying that the Mitzorah enters an area not appropriate, according to Rav Chista, they're exempt. Why? Shnei Amar, it says in a pasuk, Badad yeshev michutz l'machaneh. Alone, sitting outside the camp. Moshavo badad, that when it says place is alone, yeshev levado, okay, will sit alone. Yeshev michutz l'machane, outside the camp. Moshavo hakatuv nitku l'ase. And there we see that his place of sitting, according to the text of the Torah, was reestablished as a positive commandment. And as a result, then that ase supersedes the low tase. Now, that's the argument there. ATV. But I'll challenge this, says the Gemara, with the following. Mitzorash in Ichnas Lefrenim Mimachitzato, that a Mitzorah who enters an area beyond his boundary, Ba'ar Ba'im is going to get Malchus Zavin Vizavot, Shenichnesu Lifnim, Mumachitzatan. If the Zav or Zava enters the area inside their boundary, Malchus Ba'ar Ba'im, Vitame Mate, Mutali Kaneis Lamachane Levia. And this brighter says, that the Tame Mace corpse tumor, one is, is able to enter at least a different camp, if they're a Yisrael, to the Levitical camp. Velo Tame Mace Bilvad Amru, and not only the Tame Mace corpse tumor person, did they say this? Ela Afilu Mate Baatsmo Shine Amar, but even carrying a deceased body is being able to bring in, to be brought into the Levitical camp. Shinamar, as it says, Baikach Moshe et Atzmot Yosef Imo, that Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him. What does it mean, Imo, with him? The Mechitzato, into his portion, into his camp. So Moshe lived in the Levitical camp. Now, the Gemara, however, tells us, Tana'ayhi, the Suza Machloka Tana'im, the Tanya that one brighter teaches, Badad Yeshev, okay? Levado Yeshev, that he should sit by himself, namely, 
שלא יהיו טמאים אחרים יושבים עמו, that there should be no other individuals who are tame being with him. So if that's the case, it's as if you would need a separate camp for the Zavin, a separate camp for the Metzoraim, and a separate camp also for the Tame Meis. Yechol yiyu Zavin utma'e meitim mishtalchin l'machane echad. However, it's possible I might have thought that Zavin and Zavot and Tame Mesim, Corpse Tuma, that they would be sent together to one camp. Why? Because Talmud Loma, the text says, Velo yitam'u et machanehem, that you should not defile their plural camp. Litain machane lezeh. But to give a camp to this one and a camp to that one, that's the view of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Omer, a no tzarich. According to Rabbi Shimon, that's not the case. It's not necessary. Rehu Omer, because he says as follows, Vayishalchu, to send them out, Min hamachaneh, called Sarua the called Za the called Tamela Nefesh, citing that Pasuk, Yeomer, that it should be said, Tma'e mate. Okay, that that refers to the corpse tuma people. The Al Yeomer, Tma'e Zav. But don't say it includes those who are Tame because of Zav. Va'ani Omer, and therefore I say, Okay, Rabbi Shimon. To my A team, Mishtalchin, Zavin, Lo Kol Shikain, that the Tame Mates are sent out and the Zav is all the more so. Lamane Amar Zav. Okay, why then was it said Zav? Litain Lo Machanesh Nia, to give him a second camp, in other words, a separate location. Vayomer, and they say, Zav, Va'al Yomar Mitzora. I would say that applies to the Zav, but not to the Mitzora. Va'ani Omer, and further I say, Zavin Mishtalchin, okay, that the Zavin are sent out of the camp, Mitzora'in, Lo Kol Shekein, and the Mitzora, how much more so? Therefore, Lama Ne'amar Mitzora. Why was Mitzora therefore said? Litain lo machanesh lishit, that he should be designated into a third camp. Keshehu Omer Badad Yoshev, because when it says he sits alone, Akatuv Natku La'ase, because there, okay, the text, Torah text, established it as a positive command. So the Gemara now proceeds. If we're comparing these three categories of Tuma, okay, what happens? It asks, Mai chumre dezav mitame mate. What is the stringency in regards to a zav as compared to someone who is tame from a corpse? Shekain tum ayot se alav megufo, that the zav, his status of tuma, exudes from himself, his own body. But the Gemara says ad raba, perhaps the opposite is the case. Tame mate chamor, maybe the status of being corpse tame is the one that's more stringent. Shekain taun haza'a. Shlishi Ushvi'i, because that individual needs sprinkling, right, on the third day and the seventh day, right? But that's not the case of the of the Zav. Amakra. And the Pasuk therefore says, Tame, Vichol Tame. 
it says in one place, Tame, okay? But it says, Kol Tame, Lerabot Tame Sheretz. That might include then somebody who became Tame from contact with an animal, right? The Sheretz. Vizav Chamor Mitame Sheretz. And we would say that the Zav is more stringent than one whose tame is because of the sheretz. Umay chumre. So what then would be his stringency? Kida Amran, as we've said. Ad Rabba. Just the opposite, I might argue, says the Gemara. Sheretz chamor. Maybe Tuma from the sheretz is more stringent. Why? Shekin mitame ba'onis that it's possible then that the person becomes Tomei by accident. Okay. Amri. And therefore, as we go over, we'll say as follows. Ki hai gavna, in a similar case, right? We could argue the following. Zav, namit muye metame ba'onis. Maybe it's possible that with regards to a Zav, they're also going to be, uh, um, I don't want to say eligible, but they may also be a result in their status of a of becoming Tame by an accident. Kidarav Huna, as explained, as we're going to see in a moment, by Rav Huna. Because Rav Huna says as follows. The Amar Rav Huna, Re'iya Rishona, Shel Zav, Metam Abba Onus. That according to Rav Huna, the first sighting of his, let's call it flow for the moment, okay? For the Zav, he may be considered Tame as an accident, okay? In other words, we're not sure at that first flow, whether He's that so individual good. for sure is considered to be a Zav or not. Okay? It could simply be a, let's call it a seminal discharge. Okay? Chumre. Okay? The Matsora Mizav. So therefore we now have to ask what then is the stringency of the Mitzora over that of the Zav? Shekain ta'un priya ufrima va'asur b'tashmi shamita. Well, I might argue, therefore, that with the Mitzora, he has to undergo a situation where the hair has to grow wild and unkempt. And not only that, he has to tear his clothes but furthermore, the Mitzorah is forbidden with any kind of uh, intimate relations. Ad Rabba, just the opposite, I might argue. Zav Chamor, maybe the Zav is more stringent. Shekain Metame Mishkav Umoshav, okay, because the Zav transmits his or her tuma by sitting or by lying, and also transmits their tuma even to an earthenware vessel through some sort of movement. Amarkra. But we have a pasuk now that tells us zav, the chol zav. It's not only says Zav, but any Zav. The Rabot, Baal Keri. That that would include someone who had a nightly omission. Umetzora, Chamormi Baal Keri. But the leper person, their, may, their status should be more stringent than the Baal Keri. Umay Chumre, and what is their stringency? <coughs> Kida Amran, as we've said. Okay. So the Gemara argues again, Ad Rabba, maybe just the opposite. Okay. Al Keri Chamor. 
that maybe the Baal Keri's status is more stringent. Shekin mitamei b'mashu. Okay. Right? That we say that the Baal Keri becomes tamei even with any amount of a emission. Why? Savarla k'rabi nasa. Because maybe he's of the view similar to that of Rabbi Nassim, where a Brita teaches that Rabbi Nassim tells us, says to us, Mishum Rabbi Ishmael, in the name of Rabbi Ishmael, Zav Tzrich Gechatimat Pi Ha'ama. That for someone to be considered a Zav, as opposed to a Balkari, okay, that has to be a certain amount of the flow, large enough so that it's equal to the size of the tip of the organ, not just a, a drop or two, okay? V'lo hodulo chachamim, but the sages did not agree with him. V'it kishle balkeri lezav, and they made a association between the Balkari and the Zav. Now the Gemara tells us, if that's the case, coming back to our original Pasuk, okay, where it listed three categories, right? Zav, Tsarua, and Tmeimeis, right? Where it says, V'chol Tsarua, Lamali. Why then did it need to say all in regards to Tzaruah. I de dichtiv kol zav, since the text said all, or in this case, any zav, ktiv nami kol tzaruah. Here too, it also wrote from a literary style, okay, any leper. Rabbi Yehuda, and in the view of Rabbi Yehuda, Shapir Ka'ama Rabbi Shimon. It was well the how he answered Rabbi Shimon. How who Why? Because he needed it for something else that was taught in the Brita. Namely, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, that Rabbi Eliezer says, Yecho Dachko Zavin Umutsurain. It's possible that I might have thought that the number of individuals who were Tame, both in a status of Zav or leper, could push themselves to enter the temple precinct, the Azara. But Pesach Habba on an occasion when the Korban Pesach would be offered in a status of being tummy. Yechol yihiyu chayavim, that therefore they might be considered guilty, right? Chayav, of a, of a love, of being over. Talmud Loma, therefore the Pasuk tells us, v'yishalchu min hamachane, kol tsarua, the kol zav, Therefore, that's why the Pasuk says should be sent out of the camp any leper, anyone who's zav, anyone corpse tumor. B'sha'ah she'tam'e metim mishtalchim at the time when one who is corpse tumor is sent out zavin umetzorein mishtalchim then also Zav status people and leper status people are also sent out. And, right? Okay. Yes. Tme'e metim, mishtalchim, right? That tme'e metim are sent out. And, yes, Zavin umetzorein mishtalchim that the Zavin and Mitzorin is sent out. Now, Amar Mar, 
we come back to something that we said earlier. Zav, v'chol zav. What is the difference? Lerabot bal keri, to include one who is a bal keri. Rabbi Yochanan. This seems to support a view of Rabbi Yochanan. The Amar Rabbi Yochanan, as Rabbi Yochanan says, Mechilot lo nitkadshu, that the tunnels that ran under the Azara, okay, were not sanctified. Ubal keri mishtaleach chutz l'shtei machanot. And therefore, let's take the example, if a Kohen became a Balkari, he had a way of leaving the Azara by going through these tunnels and leaving the, going out, okay, past the Azara, past the walls to further outside. Now, the Gemara, however, challenges this statement. May TV, we challenge with the Brighta. Baal Keri, Kimaga Sheretz. One who is a Baal Keri, we compare him to someone who had contact with a Sheretz. Ma'ilav Lamachanotam, isn't it not that he should go to his? To their own camp? No, says the Tumatam. No, that was stated only in regards to their Tuma status. The Tumatam, to their Tuma status, Hai Tumat Are Ktibe. Okay, but isn't it here written that this is a Tuma? Okay, until evening. Isn't that what's the status? Then they can go to mikvah and then be tahor. Vahai tumas erev ketivbe. And here, indeed, it's written that they were only to be tome until evening. Ela lav lamachanotam. But rather, not, uh, rather, aren't we not going to say that it has to be for their own encampments? Lo, no, says the Gemara, le'olam le'tumatam. No, we're dealing here with the status of their tumah. Bahakamash malan, and it comes to tell us and teach us, the balkeri kemaga sheretz, that one who is a balkeri is comparable to one who had contact with the sheretz. Ma maga sheretz mitame ba'ones, the same way that contact with the sheretz might render one tame by accident, afbal kere metame ba'ones. So likewise, if he's a bal kere, it's possible he became tame by accident. I'm going to continue just a little bit. Metive. But again, we'll challenge this with another brighter. Bo'el mida. Ketame mate. We say that one who has relations with a nida, okay, is like a tame mace, like corpse tumor. Lamai, for what purpose? Ilema le tumatam. If we say it's according to their level of tumor, hai tumat shiv aktiv be. But here we see that there's a written specifically that it's Tome for seven days. Baha'i Tum'at Shiva K'tiv Be. And here, when we're saying that it's written for seven days, Ela Lav Lamachanotam, isn't it not rather referring them to their camp, to their site? Umidi Sefer Lamachanotam, Have Resha Nami Lamachanotam. And since the end, must be referring them to their camp. So the beginning discussion must refer them to their camp. Mide area, is that really an appropriate comparison? Ha kedeita, vaha kedeita. Okay, this one is in this situation, 
and this one is a different situation. Okay, now, so we continue now, okay, with again with this argument of trying to determine, okay, which is more stringent. Meitive, we bring another brighter and challenge. Mizav, that the leper is more stringent than the Zav. The Zav Chamor mate, and the Zav seems more stringent than corpse tumor. Yatsa Bal Keri, Shatame mate, Chamor Mimenu. Okay, that excludes then the Bal Keri because the Tame mate is more stringent than him. My Yetse, what does it mean then goes out? Love Yetse Miklal Zav. Then it, isn't it not mean that he's excluded then from the principle of Zav? Uva Miklal Tame Mate. And that would carry him over then to the status of being parallel to a corpse tumor. The Ha Tame Mate, Chamor Mimenu. But a tamoy mate, corpse tumor, is more stringent than that. Umutar b'machane levia, And that's permitted in the Levitical camp. Lo yetse mi machane tame mate v'nechnas l'machane zav. So maybe he doesn't go out from the camp of the corpse tumor and go into the camp of the zav. And even though we say that the corpse tumor is more stringent, the mutar that he's permitted, in the camp of the, of the uh, uh, Levitical camp. And that's where we're going to stop right there today. Okay.